So far we've only created pretty simple programs. Programs that print out to the screen exactly what we tell them to print out ahead of time. These don't make very interesting programs, nor very interactive programs. In this short lesson, what we want to do is create a way for the user to put in values into the variables and have those values stored and later printed out to the screen. Here's how we do that. We use a, a, a command called cin. Remember we used cout before? Now we're going to use cn. Here's how we do it. For example, with this uh, points equals uh, or is assigned the value of 1000. What we want to do is replace this line right here uh, with a cn command. So we say cin, cn, and we use a set of greater than or double greater than symbols. It's just the opposite of the cout command where we use double less than symbols. Here it's double greater than symbols. And then we simply print out, uh, type out the name of the variable that we want to store the value in. So in a way these uh, double greater than signs they simply are pointing towards the variable in this case points that's going to receive the value from the standard input device which is the keyboard. Let's just go ahead and see what this is going to look like. I'm going to save the program and hit F5 and say yes to building it. The program will build real quick. Now when I run the program interestingly enough I just see a blank screen and a flashing um, cursor point. What that means is it's waiting for input from me. So as I recall my first variable is an integer so I'm just going to put in a whole number let's say 525 and then hit enter. Then it says press any key to continue that's my pause statement and when I do so all of a sudden it prints out my five variable values. Sure enough that first variable is no longer 1000 it's now 525 which I just inputted. Uh, through standard input on the keyboard and here are the other variable values. Alright, so quite simply that's how we receive interactive input from the users to use the C in command as I've done here. However, um, there's one problem with what I just did. Uh, the program really didn't prompt the user to tell them what kind of input they were waiting for so it would probably be better if I did something like this. C out, double S then, and then I went ahead and put in quote double quote something like um, please enter a whole number and then uh, end that double quote put in an end line marker so that I go to the next line and then start to wait for the user to put in input. Let's save that and run it and we'll see the difference. When the program runs now instead of just seeing a a blank screen with a cursor blinking, I actually see a prompt and I know what to do now. Please enter a whole number. Oh, okay, I'll enter the number 300. Press any key to continue and now I'm getting the output as expected. So what we need to do is follow the same pattern in all of the other variables that we just created. Uh, again, for boolean I'm going to do something like C out. Uh, please enter one for true or zero for false. Uh, that's that's how we enter the variables or that's how the computer understands true or false. One is a true and zero is a false so we'll just tell the user to put that in. Put an end line in and a semicolon at the end of that line. And now if I want the user to actually put in input then I need to use C in and now the variable that I want to store that value in is the boolean variable play again. We'll test it one more time and here we're getting please enter a whole number 25, please enter one for true, zero for false, oh, I'll say false, zero, press any key to continue and now I'm seeing the output that I expected. Okay, I'm going to pause here and let you go ahead and finish the rest of these uh, other three variables, adding a prompt using the cout statement and then adding the cin statement to allow user input of the variable value. Okay, we're back. Hopefully at this point you've edited your program fully, adding all of the cin and cout statements. If you go ahead and save your program one last time and run F5, you should 
get an output that looks something like this. Please enter a whole number under the number 5. Enter 1 for true, 0 for false. I'll enter 1. Enter your middle initial, M. Please enter the current temperature. Oh my, it's a balmy 67 degrees out. Please enter your pet's name. Well, my dog's name is Ember. Press any key to continue. There you go. The output now is based on the user's input through the keyboard. And we see all that printed here. That's how you edit your program.